Liberia is a nation of visionaries with a legacy of industry and creativity. The Liberian Business Alliance is delighted to be in conversation with visionaries who are game changers in their industries. For the next 12 months, we will explore the inspiration and motivations behind their chosen discipline, how we can learn from and support them. We welcome you to Visionaries, the Culinary Edition. We are joined by Masa Ba Gray. Mrs. Ba Gray has been a culinary professional for more than 10 years. She is a caterer who lives in East London, Walthamstow, and is from Liberia. Ms. Bagre makes Liberian food and other African dishes. Her signature Liberian dishes are fried potato greens and collard greens. Other signature dishes include Liberian, Guinean, and Sierra Leonean jollof rice, igusi, and okra. And now, join us for Visionaries, the Culinary Edition. Hi, Masa. Thank you so much for joining the Visionary Series for the Liberian Business Alliance. I'm so excited to speak to you about what you're doing, your side hustle. But before we get there, I wanted to first start with what was your main inspiration or motivation for becoming a culinary professional? Hi, how are you? Um, yeah, what inspired me is my mom. Yeah, my mom was a very good cook. She did a lot of catering when I was much younger and I was always in the kitchen. Every time she cooking, she always allowed her to participate. So I got passion for cooking. So that's make it more easier. And then as I grew up, I kind of realized that I love the kitchen more. I love cooking. So I just got into it and it's every other time I can inspire or learn other new things, so yeah. And what mindset and skills are required to be a culinary professional? You just mentioned learning new things and wanting to learn new things. What other mindset and skills do you think would be required? There is a lot of skill, but you don't need to just rush into it like that, but the more, the more effort, you put into learning new things, the more you get more skill. You can do catering calls and stuff like that. And then learning other more and recipe and stuff like that. Yeah. That's a customer service. You need to have a good customer service, manner of approach, how to talk to people, because that's how you get more customer. And you need to have more patience as well, because Sometimes it's very challenging. Some people, the way they talk to you, but you as a business person, you have to be more patient and try to tolerate a lot of things. So you talked about one of the challenges that you may have as a caterer is the way that people talk to you and having to be patient with people and how they speak to you. What are some of the other challenges you've experienced as somebody who's doing this as a side hustle What's our, and been in this industry for over 10 years? What are some of the challenges you've experienced as somebody who does catering as a side hustle? Challenge with customers. All of it. Yeah, it. it's a little bit challenging because some customer in the beginning, the private recommended by a friend, and when it comes to you, they start talking to you nicely. Oh, can you do that? Blah, blah, blah. When everything goes on, they won't want to pay your money on time. They don't want, they want the service. They want to demand this and demand that. And you try so hard to give it your best. And then sometimes it just try to bring the worst out of you. So it's very challenging. Like I said, again, you need to be patient, but sometimes it's very frustrating because putting all your time, standing in the kitchen for morning, probably you start maybe two days before the day of your catering, is a lot of time you put it into it. So, and sometimes the customer don't really put that into consideration. They just feel 
looking at the food is so easy, but it's a lot of job. What about finding customers? Has it been easy to find customers or have you experienced any challenges people knowing about you and the business that you run? Um, sometimes finding customers is a little bit easier for me because, well, I won't praise myself that much. I'm a very good cook, so I get a lot of recommendation, like when I cater and then people come, oh, this food is nice, delicious, excuse me, delicious, and then some, they're going to ask who made the food, so it depends how you give your service, that's how you get customer, yeah, but I find that easier for me most time because my service is very good, I give a very good service, yeah. I try to do my best. Sometimes I even go more, I go above, yeah. I've mentioned a couple of times now that for you, this business is a side hustle. So how do you balance and manage being a full-time professional as well as having this catering business as a side hustle? It's a bit challenging because not only having my job, not only having in the catering, I got this as well. It's, it's, it's a lot sometimes, but you have to do what you have to do because you, you have to do it. So it is challenging. Like for now, I got catering this weekend coming up. I got family issue. I got kids. I got work and I have to do. So sometimes it is, it is very challenging. But like I said, you have to do it because that's something you love doing and it's part of you. So you have to make time to do it. And so you talk about loving to do it. And in my introduction, I mentioned your signature dishes. Why fry potato greens and collard greens? Why, why are those two signature dishes? Why do you love them so much? Well, because I, when I was younger, my mother used to cook that a lot. And then we used to have that for Liberia. There are certain kind of soup you have for certain kind of days and collard greens and fried potato greens, most Liberian on the Sunday, that's the dishes they had. For some reason, that's most houses you put into Liberia those days now, be everything fried, 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 fried. They don't eat much of red oil on Sunday. So I used to look forward to Sunday because I know on Sunday, my mom gonna make it so extra. She used to put like country chicken and kill the chicken. And I was later, she always used to give me the chicken feet. So I used to look forward to my Sunday dish, yeah. And everyone is home. We getting ready for school on Monday. So Sunday was a lovely day to look forward to. That's some of the reason why I like my color greens and fried with the greens. And in addition to your signature dishes, you also incorporate other African dishes as well. Why was it important for you to be able to cater to not just the Liberian community, but to be able to make other African food? Well, I find that important because for my business, it's not only Liberians I cater for. And it's so funny, like, to the extent that I don't care to for only West African. That, that's that's making it more challenging for me because they don't know our kind of food. But be, like I said, recommendation, they went to party and tasted the food like, oh, wow, that's delicious. So they come on, they don't, they don't mind if it's not their country food. They, they just love it because it's a love that teaches. One of the things when we wanted to, as an organization, focus on the culinary profession for librarians, it wasn't easy finding mm -hmm. librarians who cater, who are culinary professionals and a restaurant owner. Why do you think that is? Why do you think in the United Kingdom, in, in Europe in particular, there were very few, very small number of people of librarian culinary professionals in the United Kingdom and Europe? The reason why you had to find Liberian businesses opening in the UK, for my own understanding, I feel we Liberians, we don't really support each other. 
there's, there's a lot of hits within the community. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a bit difficult. It's a sad situation though, because you'll find most Liberians going to other Africans, restaurants, clubs and stuff, they support them. But if you get a Liberian, for example, open a restaurant right now, you won't find a lot of Liberian coming. Probably that person had a beef with this person and the person have another beef with the other person and then the gang on you. Like at the end of the day, it come up, it, the women see that like, oh, we need to promote our sister or our brother. They just find that as a, I don't know how the word to describe that, but that is so sad, you know. Imagine in another country, we should be one regardless. We should be together regardless, but, and every other community has issue, but we need to come together at once, no matter what. But I think that's one of the biggest problem of our Liberian community. We go so party, we, we hang out with each other, but we always have some issue. So when it comes to business, it's not easy for a Liberian to sustain a business in this country because like I said, that person who's probably opening the business have a beef with so many other people. And then the, uh, the person, the friend with the other person will say, oh, I'm not going there. And the other person, I'm not going. At the end of the day, that business is just, just to itself, you know, which is so sad. So we Liberian, we really need to grow up and put these things behind us and know that life has to go on. Life is too short. We don't need all of that, you know? We support other nationality like Africans. So why can't we do it for ourselves? So I think that's one, one of the biggest reasons why we don't support each other. I uh, thank you for that. And I, I hear that a lot. It's one of one of the main objectives for the Liberian Business Alliance and this series is to one amplify Liberian professionals and business owners who are doing amazing things like yourself, but also start to establish unity in our community. It's important to be very objective. And whether or not I like you or not, I can put that aside. If your food's good, I'm gonna come and support your business yeah. because it's good for the community and whatever personal issue I have, that's a personal issue, it's not a business issue. And sometimes it's important for us to be able to separate that. So I completely agree with you. If we think about then the sector, the culinary sector, because you talked about how Food is a staple in the Liberian community. In Liberia, for Liberians around the world, food is very much part of our culture and how we do things. Why do you think the culinary sector is so important for the economic development of Liberia? It's important that we have that because there's a lot of Liberians in the UK. There is a lot of Liberians in the UK. so. And if you go in Peckham, you will see Nigerians, Ghanaians, Congolese, Sierra Leoneans. You see other African businesses there, but you won't see Liberian. So Liberian is always like, we always at the list. And that is a sad thing for us to always be at the least. And I think we put ourselves in the situation that we are always at the least, like for example, what I just said. So it, it is very important. I just hope and pray that we Liberian will try to realize our mistakes and do something better for ourselves because at the end of the day, we represent Liberia. So it's not about us as well, it's about the country. If we get into business here, obviously we want to go back home to do something bigger. Mm -hmm. So it will help a lot. On that point, what can Liberian businesses and the community do to help develop the culinary sector here? You talked about supporting each other. So if somebody wants to open a restaurant or in your existing catering business coming to support you, what else can we do? Like always be there whenever. Like when you're having an event, tell your friends, or oh, I, I know some, just recommendation. And yeah, being together, we help each other because if we're not together, we ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> this is true. And so coming back to, to people now who want to support you and your business, how can they get in contact with your catering services, which is just your name, Masa Bagre? How can they find you? Not really on social media, but hopefully it depends. I might go there in the future. But for now, I got my telephone number to my emails on WhatsApp. Yeah. Okay. So your email, your WhatsApp, your telephone number to find you. They're putting your information now so everybody can see it. And that's how they can locate you. And where do you cater? Where do you cover? Is it just London, the UK? Where do you cover so people know? At the moment, it's just London. Just Lon anywhere in London. If you're in North yeah. or East or West, you cover London. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they want to find Masa, call her, <laughs> text her, email her. If you're London-based, she will be more than happy to cater your event as well as just to cook you some potato, fried potato greens <laughs> and collard greens for, for Sunday. It's not, it's not only potato greens, it's luck. So yeah. Everything, yeah. the whole yeah. the whole thing, okra, goosey, what you name it, she can cook it. Yeah, and fing fingers foods as well. Finger foods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? Let everybody know, now is the time. <laughs> so yeah, it's not. It's not only potato greens. I do, I do all the like brain dishes. I do, like, they're not the like brain dishes, but when it comes to finger food, I do cake, cornbread, shortbread, rest bread, color, plenty, and then, yeah, and a lot of rice, fried rice, every other thing, chicken, meat, um, yeah, every other thing is not only cassava leaf, okra, I, I do all of that as well. So, yeah. So the next time people are having an event or they just want to have a feast at home, they should think about you and call you mm -hmm. to have that organized. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much for mm -hmm. speaking with me today and joining the Librarian Business Alliance Visionary series and we look forward to our one of our events and i will certainly be calling you to cater for us so thank you very much I, <laughs> I would like to personally thank masa bob gray for joining us for the visionary series culinary edition her contributions were insightful and valuable and the theme is consistent liberian unity we need to support each other. We at the Liberian Business Alliance will continue to amplify Liberians who are doing amazing things. So please visit our website at www.liberianbusinessalliance.org and our Instagram and LinkedIn pages at Liberian Business Alliance. And if you're not a member, membership is free. So join us today. Until the next time, see you soon.